All right, it's time for another mailbag. I'm just going to have to double up on them until we start getting caught up here. So let's get into it. And that song was written and shared by one of the listeners out there who said it reminded him of the old Mystery School intro. And when I heard it, I was like, oh, I gotta ask if I can use this for one of the new intros, which he graciously allowed me to do. And so a big thank you goes out to Pat Mac 66 And if you'd like to go check out the full song, I will put the link to that right here. It's definitely worth a listen. I also wanted to take a brief moment to thank all of those who have supported this channel through their donations, including a sizable one from one of the listeners down under in beautiful Australia. It is appreciated, so thank you very much. And may all of you have that generosity returned to you many times over in kind. Greetings, freighter. I was wondering if you'd be open to telling me how old you were when you first started practicing in ritual magic. Um, late 30s when I actually started practicing ritual magic. I was pretty armchair uh, for many years prior to that. I myself am 19 and I know that is pretty young for this kind of practice. Just wondering if it means things might be harder for me. Um, No, it'll make it easier, actually. It may be harder for you to find and dedicate the time involved at that age. The discipline itself. However, starting younger will make it easier for you in the long run. I mean, just to put it in perspective, if you start now, by the time you're my age... You'll have far more experience than I do. The first elemental grade of Zelator, um, which is the grade of Earth. Do you know how brutal it is for a middle-aged person to suddenly start getting into shape and concerning themselves with their health and kicking bad habits? And It's just easier to do that when you're younger and get that out of the way and put that behind you. You have the advantage with that when you're younger. Older people have the advantage of discipline. Sticking to it every day. And not in every case either. I mean, there's a lot of young people who are very disciplined, very dedicated to the art and the great work. And you may actually even have more time at your disposal through the day. So I guess it's whether or not you feel you can put off the distractions young people have a lot of distractions and that's where the self-discipline is going to come into play also was wondering if i could ask what turned you on to ritual magic in the first place thanks for all the help and thank you for the question i appreciate it well that's quite a bit of a long story and i'll spare you most of those details As I said, I was pretty armchair to begin with, but I got into magic and performing magic for the same reason that a lot of people start out in magic, and that is their life sucks and they want to change it around. (laughs) And things had gotten pretty bad in my life, and ritual magic actually, I'd have to say, saved my life. I thought, what the hell, I'll give this a go, and if it don't work out, I guess I'm done. I really had nowhere else to turn, to be quite honest with you. But if I hadn't, then I probably wouldn't be talking with any of you right now, because I needed that experience. I had to go through those difficult times to be able to relate to those who are going through the same difficult times and to help guide them through that 
Some of you may remember when I came across somebody doing a review of me. And that person had said, you know, he may be talking magic and this other stuff, but what he's really doing is self-help and self-development. And that's absolutely true. I mean, that's what the great work is. Like many others who start out in magic, they tend to start trying to affect things exterior to them, you know. But the real magic is changing yourself, and as you change yourself, then the things outside of you start to change. There's been many, many, many self-help gurus, such as Bob Proctor and others, that always say, if you change your mind, you'll change your life. And so to cut a long story short, I got into magic to help myself. And going through that, now I'm able to help others. And help guide them to the light from a dark and hopeless place that I was once at. Well, luckily for me and others, it worked out. And I'm sure I've mentioned it before that as many questions as I get, I get just as many messages thanking me for helping them. And the reason I'm able to do so is because I was in that place and I took action. I went all in on ritual magic and it paid off. Can you teach me how to do a freezer spell? I have someone I'd rather not continue to cross paths with. Well, I mean, there's a lot of them online. All you have to do is Google Freezer Spell, and you'll have many variations to choose from. You want to create a symbolic representation of your target, and then freeze them. <laughs> and it's really that simple, so long as you're following the laws of magic. Creating a statement of intent, forgetting that you cast the spell, etc., etc., it would take an entire video or two to do a step-by-step. -step. And I may at some point, I think Birch may have a freezer spell on his page. But I can't really say that my freezer spell is that much different from anybody else's. I will say that I do mine on Saturday in the hour of Saturn during a waning moon for timing. Even better would be to get a fetish link a sympathetic link to that person, if you're able to. But creating your own symbolic representation of them will work, but a sympathetic link to them will work even better. And thank you for the question. Do you work a 9 to 5, or is magic your only source of income? Uh, neither. I do not work a 9 to 5, nor... Is magic my only source of income? Follow the advice of Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, and all the other wealth building self help coaches and set up multiple sources of income. Every wealthy person has multiple sources of income. Does your girlfriend do magic? Well, everyone's doing magic whether they know it or not. So, yes, she's doing magic. No, she's not doing it purposefully. She has her own interests and magic is not one of them. What type of magic can I do to discover my highest calling in life in the form of a career? Well, any type really. Um, as long as your statement of intent is to find your highest calling in the form of a career. I would say meditation is probably going to be your most beneficial practice in that regard. Because when you meditate, things just start coming to you. It's amazing the things that will spring into your mind once you begin getting the clutter out of the way. Thanks a lot, Freighter. Are you finished with Words of Power or will you be adding more in the future? I may add some in the future. Words of Power was always meant to be a standalone program, and I didn't really plan to add the bonus video. That stuff had just come to me, and I added it. So I wouldn't say there's plans to add things in the future, but I may add things in the future. 
I'm keeping that possibility open and it will go out automatically if and when that happens. Thanks for the question. Hi X. Hi. I watch your channel a lot and often pay close attention, but I rarely comment or get involved too much for the sake of observation. I have one question and that is, is there any occluded significance to your continuous sign off line? Take care. I highly doubt that it's merely an autopiloted farewell. Actually it is. <laughs> That's just something I've said since the beginning, and it just kind of stuck. And as we know, what you do repetitively ends up becoming a habit, and it's just a habitual sign-off. But I appreciate the question. <laughs> now I'm going to be all conscious about it when I get to the end here. $25 to see this? Am I seeing that correctly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you think that's something, you should see my consultation fees. <laughs> But yeah, I understand that to some people that's a lot of money. To others, it's a drop in the bucket. I do my best to try to balance that. If you're one of those whom $25 is on the high end, I would suggest to go look at my money spell videos in order to help you raise some extra cash, which you should be doing anyway because magic isn't expensive pastime. It really is. Also, if you want to have more money, you need to change your mindset about money. If you think that $25 is a lot of money, it will always be a lot of money to you. Not to other people, but to you. Everything begins in the mind and you need to begin there. Pick up Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. The person who says they can't afford anything is the person that is doing magic against themselves so they can't afford anything. And I do cover this within the course. Thanks for the question. You know Tyler from RSD? Not personally, no. I've never met the man. But I'm real big on the seven hermetic principles and improving oneself. I came across Tyler's material in the recommended video section on YouTube. And I forget which video it was, but it had a self-helpish type of title. And I'm thinking, oh, well, this might be interesting. And it was. Because Tyler, Bob Proctor, and all these other self-help people are using the hermetic principles whether they know it or not that's exactly what they're teaching they may not call it that but that's exactly what they're teaching so no I do not know him personally although I do know what he's teaching thanks for the question hi I was wondering I'm watching the mystery school series and I think the odd thing did manifest in my yard how do I message you in order to make sure it was the thing the sigil was meant to manifest? Or should I just ask you here? You can ask me here if you want to. I gave the answer in the uh, Laws of Magic series already to what that is. I have not announced it publicly on the channel because, you know, some people may still want to try it. I have gotten a lot of previous replies to <laughs> that sigil in that video and no one had the correct answer for what that sigil was intended for originally intended for anyway but to me it raises an interesting question if someone creates a sigil whether or not that same sigil will work for the intended purpose for someone else or will it represent something entirely different to someone else's subconscious mind these are things that have not yet been explored, to my knowledge. And as part of the reason I put it out there, I want to see if anybody actually does get it correct. And I'm still holding out hope for that when my sigil magic course does come out. To see if anyone can pick up that sigil and get the same exact result that I did. Why did you say, are you worse off if you don't finish the self-transformation process? 
is a kind of like modifying a stock car. And if you don't modify all of the different parts, that it will make the car unbalanced and create a problem. Such as, for example, your engine is stronger, but you didn't upgrade motor mounts, so now your exhaust gets severed due to the severe amount of torque and moving of the engine inside the bay that occurs. Essentially, not finishing the self-transformation or grades of magic would cause imbalance and result in you not operating in a balanced slash grounded slash efficient manner. Well, somebody's really into cars. <laughs> um, I mean, kind of. You have the right idea, but it's more of a matter of being stuck between the worlds, which, as I spoke of in another video, is not a desirable place to be all the time because you're not being completely reassembled until after the elemental grades, once you reach Portal. And it's not just me saying this. The self-initiation book says it as well. And I appreciate the question. LOL, you sound like a stoned Bill Murray. Dig the videos, man. Thanks for sharing. And thank you, but everyone already knows that I'm Seth Rogen. Which I firmly deny. Both my sons are Pisces. February 20th, 2005, and February 27th, uh, 2012. <laughs> After reading about Pisces, I am very concerned. The description I read in the book, and now here in your video, hold a lot of similarities to my oldest son. Time will tell for the younger one. So to see your most recent vid and to receive more information came at an amazing time, to say the least. I know nothing is written in stone, that's written in the stars, but I fear the tragic ends we hear about with this sign. Thank you very much for this video. I'll be listening to it a few more times to fully absorb the information. Now with this book, I'll be able to see how a Leo like me, August 9th, 1976, will relate to my Pisces. Astrology is very interesting indeed. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that tragic endings and things like that um yeah you can have a tragic end no matter what sign you are and the sun sign is not the most important sign your ascendant and your moon sign is going to be far more important and you shouldn't be putting your energy into fearing things what you think about you bring about so if you're fearing tragic ends that's what you're doing magic on you know just refrain from even worrying about that. If you're really concerned with the sign of Pisces, you should be doing everything to curb any indolence that's come about. Because Pisces has a reputation for being lazy. And it's not that they're lazy, it's just that since their mind is between the worlds, they can't focus on any one thing. They're constantly pulled back and forth between different things. And when you can't focus on anything, it's hard to get anything done. When someone says that they're a Pisces, what they're really saying is that the sun was in Pisces when they were born. Now, the tarot card associated with the sun is the sun. The tarot card associated with Pisces is the moon. And right there we have polar opposites associated with that sign. In the astrology video on the sun that I had done, I went over how the sun is your goals, what you focus on, the conscious mind, and the moon is intuition, daydreaming, the astral, the subconscious mind. And so you see how a Pisces can be very introverted, very concerned with the subconscious mind, spirituality and walks around in a daydream-like trance. But of course we have many other planets and 11 more signs to consider in one's chart as to how much of that Piscean energy will affect one's actions or inactions. I know some Sun in Pisces people who are very hard workers and are doing just fine. So I wouldn't get too stressed out or worried about it. Also, 
I cannot purchase this Words of Power because it is not available in my location, which is United Kingdom. Any other way I can get this? I really need it, please. Yes, Words of Power is available in the United Kingdom now, as well as other European countries. I had taken it down briefly because of the new EU VAT tax rules, but all of that has been since sorted out by Gumroad, and they are taking care of collecting and paying the VAT tax for those of us who sell our products on Gumroad. So it is available at the link above or in the description, and I appreciate the question. And I think that will about do it. I'm over 20 minutes in now. We still have many more questions to come. A few lessons. As well as a couple special announcements this month. I appreciate everyone who took the time to write in. And I will see you next time.